Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. I'm out in the first snow of this winter 2015 uh, as the year basically comes to an end. And I got a quick review for you here. We want to talk about this knife right here, which is the Jacked Kit KNV2. Now I recently reviewed, uh, probably a handful of months ago, the KNV3, which is a smaller version of this knife. Uh, but this is a, I just really like that other knife. Again, I, um, I call it kind of basically a nice companion knife. Uh, a nice hunting knife and this one is very similar it's got a bigger blade a bigger profile and this one I think is gonna be a lot of fun to use so uh, here's a quick look at the knife let me just give you the, the close-up there from end to end you can see it's got a very reflective uh, reflective blade as you can see me videoing with my phone today but anyhow that's the knife there's your handle Show you the um, sheath here quickly. Put the knife inside. Very similar to the KNV3. As far as you got this Kydex and then you have the ballistic nylon on the back. Hook and loop closure. You can run it through your belt. You can attach it to a pack. You got that single snap there if you want to. Uh, just to make sure that the uh, knife is secure, and then a lanyard hole at the end there, exposed pommel. So that's a look, really quick overview of the knife. But what I wanna do is actually put this thing through the paces a little bit here on this chilly day. We'll talk about the knife in the process. Here's a quick look at the knife in the sheath and on my belt. As is often the case, it's gonna move back and forth between this loop and your next loop uh, back here on the belt. It isn't, uh, it isn't supremely stable. It's not like it's rock solid there. It does have a little bit of movement, but actually with this type of knife, you know, if you're gonna be out there walking in the woods, doing hunting, you know, bushcraft and that type of stuff, you don't want something that's locked in totally. So when you move, it'll actually, you know, knock it in the way and kind of lock up on your leg like that. So that's what it looks like actually in the sheath. Here's a quick comparison of the two knives. I've actually laid them on top of my winter mittens so you can actually uh, see them. To put them right side by side like this, you can see that the KNV3 is, it's not notably like huge difference, but it's definitely smaller than the, uh, than the two. I'll put the blades right on top of one another now just so you can see what that looks like. So that's what your blades look like from the top. There's your side, looking at them from the side. You can see the finger guards a little bit different on the three versus on the two. So if you like the style of the three, you know, then the two, and you want something a little bit bigger, then this could be a good option for you. Here's a quick look at the handles. You can see again, the two is obviously, obviously bigger, but very similar style, kind of functions similarly. So there you go. So one thing you may know already is that when you're making feather sticks, having those right angles to work the knife down, you know, kind of slide the knife down, just makes it a lot easier. So even though I don't really need to baton this wood, I'm gonna split it in half so I've got some steeper angles to work with. Now because this wood is so small, I don't need a big baton to hit against the knife. I can just really tap it with my hand. So I'm just gonna do this up against a tree and I can split the wood that way pretty, pretty effectively as long as it's a small piece of wood. I want you to get down pretty far just snap into two pieces, so. Got that nice dry inner wood. Let's work on some feathers here. There you go, there's some nice tiny curls. So you can see right off the bat, makes nice work, does nice work with that. I'm gonna snap that off and put that in my pocket and work on some more on this little piece of wood. Definitely easier to lock this in on the ground to do it, but you can do it as long as you're nice and controlled. You can do it just holding it like this. So there's some of our initial feathers and let's keep working here. 
Well, as is often the case, you got technical issues. So my battery on my camera died. As you can see, the snow is still here, but the snowstorm has stopped a um, couple days later. And we're still looking at the KNV2. And we're going to put this thing through the paces. When people baton with a knife, um, you know, there are some folks who are like, why would you do that? You just bring an ax, bring a saw. And I, I totally agree. If you got two, two tools, then I would definitely have something to split wood with. However, um, if you saw my Browning Black Label uh, stowaway knife review, where I was making a fire in wet conditions with that, uh, you'll understand the importance of getting to that dry inner wood, especially if you live in a place that has a lot of snow or rain. It's just not that easy, especially if you're using a fire steel. If you've got a lighter, then you can find maybe some dry twigs underneath you know, a hemlock or something like that, get those going, and then you don't have to get to that dry, dry inner wood as, it's not as necessary, let's say. But when you are you know, in a situation where there's a lot, not a lot of tinder available, and you need to make some feather sticks to get a fire going, batoning is gonna be something that's gonna get you that dry inner wood. So because of that, I'm gonna test this out. Even though it's not a super long blade, we're gonna test it out and see how it works. Here's a look at the pile of wood uh, that I just batoned and the knife worked great, no issues whatsoever. I really had to just beat on it really hard at one point because there was a uh, one stick that had a very large knot in it. It actually broke the uh, baton a couple times, but the, uh, the KNV2 worked great for this, no issues whatsoever. And I even at one point I had to beat on the, um, on the handle. I generally wouldn't recommend that, but just to put it through the uh, paces here, I wanted to try that out and uh, this thing made pretty quick work of all the uh, all the wood I was working on. Do another test here, but this branch that's basically blocking my, part of my path out to the woods, so I'm gonna uh, baton through it using the knife. That's that. We'll just do just a little 
kind of slicing work, shaving off the bark here. I would say it's pretty comfortable in hand. And this is definitely a maple, so we're up. It's pretty knotty too, this thing's beat up. An old tree. Branch that we have is from a pretty knotty old tree. So you can see, I mean, that does that quite, quite effectively. This is too, definitely too wet of a tree to make feathers from. But, you know, I'll say I was going to be carving part of a uh, trap. Maybe I was going to be working on a spoon or something like that. This thing is definitely getting the job done. Let's think about if we were making like a notch or something like that in this piece of wood. So there's my notch. Again, reminding you, it is in maple, which is definitely a hardwood. But my hand is, is none worse for the wear. Um, I have a little bit of a hot spot, but that is actually from uh, yesterday, not from today. So I don't, and it's, it's, it definitely doesn't feel worse after using the knife and working on this notch here. Let's wrap up here, offer you some final thoughts on the KNV2. Uh, first thing I'll say is that this is, at least in my mind, this is not a survival knife. It could fall into that uh, category if you needed it to, but I wouldn't get this as a primary survival knife. It has kind of like, it's kind of the feel of like a Rat 5, but a smaller version of it. Similar blade style, but smaller handle, just smaller overall size. This is um, falling into a, a category for me that I would call this a good outdoors knife, a camping knife, or a hunting knife. I think of like the the new Gerber Gator, that's 152 cm. Uh, it's a nice knife, it's not a survival knife, it's kind of an outdoors overall knife for being out in the woods, but not you know something you're gonna go out as a one tool option. Uh, this thing has worked well, it's messy now, you can see it's definitely dirty, but it's, I don't, there's, you know, there's no chips, there's no rolls, nothing like that. And since I was batoning, you know, mostly with like this portion of the blade, um, that's where it was definitely doing most of the work. When I was working on the notch, I was using this portion up here for some of that and that is this is sharper than this is right now but the whole thing still it was it was getting work done basically uh, this is a knife that you know if you want to step outside the box of a lot of the other companies that people are buying uh, this may be one you want to check out especially for our viewers over in europe if you're looking for an outdoor knife um, this could be something that you want to consider something you want to check out got the sun beaming through there like that i feel like i should have the simpsons music now like oh anyhow so yeah, so this, uh, I like this knife. I like the, the two, I like the three. I think I'll probably hold on to the two and the three just because they are a bit unique. There's not a lot of other people out there who are at least in the, uh, you know, the channels that I'm connected to or channels that I watch that have uh, reviewed this. So I think we'll hold on to this for a bit and, and test it out and see what we think about it. There you go, one final look. The KNV2 from Jack Kit. And I'll put links down below in case you're interested in purchasing one of these and, uh, yeah, it gets a thumbs up from Everyday Tactical Vids. Not the ultimate survival knife, but a very good outdoor companion camping hunting knife that you, you wouldn't be disappointed if you considered this as an option. Thanks as always for checking out our videos here on YouTube. If you can use the Amazon link down below, that'll send you over to Amazon. So whether you're buying some paracord or say you go to buy paracord and you remember you gotta buy shampoo, whatever it is, um, if you use those links, or the link down below, you'll be helping support the Everyday Tactical Vids. I get a small commission based on purchases that are made when people come in to Amazon through that link. So I appreciate you doing that. And uh, coverage of SHOT Show 2016 is coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on all the social media outlets, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Take care.